Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Interpreting a direction outside the original intention is just plain mischief, and even criminal or underhand. I was taught when I went to law school many years ago now that a rule of thumb when interpreting the law is to look for the mischief behind the law. It's called the mischief rule. What does this mean? It means that you need to get at the spirit behind the law. What was the intention of the law? What was it trying to remedy? So today, when you see people interpret the law in a way that seems to contradict the very essence of what the law was designed for, then you can be sure, well, excuse the pun, some mischief is going on. Plainly speaking, it's mischievous of us to apply the law in a way that does not deliver on the purpose of the law. It's like hijacking a vehicle that was meant to be going to a certain destination. You get in that vehicle and you make it go in the opposite direction to an, its intended destination. The vehicle hasn't achieved its purpose. Permit me to table some samples as illustration. As regards the obnoxious pension law that awards staggering lifetime pensions to ex-governors and public office holders, Mr. Tunde Bremer, Chairman House Committee on Information and Strategy in Defense of Lagos State's adamant stance not to repeal the said law states that, as long as the law did not contravene the Constitution, state assemblies had the right to make laws for the benefit of the society in which they operate. Now, tell me, for whose benefit is awarding fat lifetime pensions to a few officials to the impoverishment of the masses? Inobi Jam question, Abi. Okay, we're told that Shore is a threat to national security and his use of the word revolution sufficient to warrant his continued illegal detention. And yet, so-called representatives of Mietiala, I'm not picking on them, in previous times made threatening statements that could be linked to life and death consequences with plenty of bloodshed in the wake of it, and they roam free with their cattle in tow. Bringing it close, closer to the everyday, SARS officials terrorize motor or road users like you and I to the enrichment of their pockets, and they too insist that they do so under the legal ambit of benefit of society. Are we beginning to see a pattern here? Flagrant abuse and oppression in the name of law and supposedly in our best interest. The essence of my advocacy is to say that more than ever, what is in our best interest is to educate ourselves on the law so that we know when the law is being abused. We should make ourselves aware of the available ombudsman services that are set up to support us when we find ourselves in such predicaments. To name a few, you have uh, SERAP, you have, um, I'm trying to remember the other one, uh, Spaces for Change, hopefully they'll be coming up on the screen. And you even have the um, anti-SARS uh, SEGA link uh, movement. In a society that has laws and yet largely operates lawlessly, our chief recourse is to arm ourselves with knowledge and understanding. That way, when a lawless official tries to do mischief with the law, we can resist them with bold face and ask, who are you kidding? Let, let me say that uh, the reality um, is that at least from my point of view, is that our lawmakers and our law enforcement people are actually the number one people who break the, the system. So they, 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 they not only break the system, then they use, the, 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 like you said, the mischief. The, they go as, you know, it's like saying, oh, I'm here to control traffic. Yeah, that's your job. That's what the law gives you. But you use that position to extort money from people. So. I, and, and then when, when your call says, oh, I'm doing the job, it's not the job that I was asked to do. And so, so that's where we find ourselves. Um, we, as I said this, look, we, we, we're in a position where 
um, sadly, if we do not realize that the rule of law is not just the standard bearer of our humanity, but it is, it is actually at the center of, of progress because you're inviting chaos. You know, you're finding that, look at what happened in Ondo State the other day, some rumor about a pastor, and then before you knew it, the, the people ha begin to lose faith in, 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 in law enforcement and in, in security. People are just losing, and it's happening gradually, and it will come to, it will come to a head soon. Yes. And so you find policemen, I'm not holding brief for policemen, who are on the highways, they, they, they buy their own uniform, they fuel their own cars. I have this. Yeah, this is, right. I they're not getting paid. So, yeah. so they get to the point where they now have to task us to collect money. To even, uh, to even yeah. fuel the yes. uh, yeah. police station. I mean, so we, we, we have this system that is just awful. I, I, I mean, I, mean I, 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 I don't, mm. yeah. So even if you go there with good intention, you'll be converted. You, you will end up because you have to fend for yourself. Wow. You know, so I, I, I think that the first thing we need to do is recognize that we have a challenge. Recognize that the rule of law is paramount. Recognize that we have a system that is not giving its best right. to the majority of people. Mm -hmm. And then how do we bring confidence back so that I, when I see a policeman, you know, um, I will, I will, I'll feel the, the sense of trust. And then young people with dreadlocks. I mean, if my son is going out, I'm like, uh, you know, um, it's, it's not good. I think for, for me, uh, the entire judicial, uh, the justice system should be overhauled, primarily. Now, I, I just noted some things when you... Mm, go uh, on. Um, first, I, I, we're made to believe that uh, justice is blind, right? So emotions are not... If you're not able to present your case, you know, with facts. We may know that you're guilty, but if you're not able to present it, then you'd lose the case, mm. right? Uh, the other thing is you talked about... Uh, so what, what does that speak towards? I was, I'm you're talking about emotions, that you're talking about, um, you know, having uh, the emotional side to justice. Okay. You understand? I'm, I'm saying justice is blind, regardless. There's no emotion in justice. Did I talk you could about be right. You're supposed side? to not be here. Yeah. Right. Did I talk I, about I, I, I I Basically, you're trying to talk about um, the intention of the law. Yeah, it's not the emotion. It's not okay. the intention. You know, okay, there's, so maybe there's, I, I, what is the intention? I so if I, did, if I picked up this cup, and someone, someone pick up the, the motive. Cup. Someone may say, oh, I was picking it to bash your head. But you know, you have to know what's in my mind. And, and to get to that, you need to understand what is it. So, I'm, yeah, I'm so it's, it's now tied to motive. evidence. It's yeah. not no, emotion. So even yeah. the motive, you need to present your case. If yeah. you're not able to present that, regardless of what your intentions are, mm. if you're not able to present that before, Okay. the court of law, then it doesn't make sense. Well, I'm I guess, not, I guess I the point I'm making is broader than that. I'm talking about law, how you apply the law. If, right. if so, the law so is, has I, an intention... I, I don't want to lose the other yeah, ones. And then on. you talk yeah, about we'll the state assemblies as well. Mm. I think, like I said, and I always say, we are... <laughs> the, our leaders are just a representation of us. Okay. We elected those leaders. And they have put a package, a very robust package for themselves. Mm. And they're telling you, look, we are entitled to this entitlement. Mm. By law, are they entitled to it? Mm -hmm. Do they have, is, is, is there a law that entitles them to do that? No, it's, there isn't. That's why I, it's I, there. I, I, but there's no, no law they to reference stop the them. constitution. There's, no no law to stop no, The state right? law. Don't forget that these are state assembly members. They mm. decide what no, but the remuneration is. You notice for. what I said. I said he's referencing the constitution and he's saying the constitution allows them to allows make a law for the benefit. Yeah. But that's him interpreting the his enrichment as a benefit, benefit to society. And it clearly wasn't the intention I of that empowerment. But he's abusing, they're still, but they're he's still abusing acting, that. They're still acting so within the confines of... There's no abuse. law. No, yeah, it's an that, abuse. I, yeah. that, that I think the, it's left to us mm, to, to tell him mm. whether it is no longer for our benefit. Absolutely. It's obvious In other words, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so how do we tell them? He's just being mischievous. But, yeah. And then we, we, we talked about SARS. I'm just a little... I want us to be uh, a little bit careful with how we generalize you know, because there are some of those uh, uh, gentlemen who have, you know, been doing excellently well. You know, it's very easy for us to, you know, use the few bad eggs to generalize. I'm not saying it's not a few bad eggs. I'm just saying it's a new one. It's a new one. It's a culture. It's a culture. Start today. Yes, we find that we have to be very careful. No, no. My point is, the incidence of brutality of SARS 
came with a climate, unfortunately, I have to put the blame on this government. It's just, it created a, a, a cloud, a narrative that you can get away with certain things. Mm. Okay, so you find more brutality happening. Yeah, it's not just SARS, yeah, the yeah. army, the, the, yeah, the, there's more the, the, yeah, there's more brutality. There's, there's, there's a tendency that people are now beginning to see that I can get away with it. Yeah. If you remember, so Occupy Lagos, even when Jonathan sent the soldiers in, uh, the soldiers were not that. Yeah. It, it was not, we, and then we all ran back home. Yes, because we don't want trouble. But, it, you know, the whole thing, you know, I, by the way, I'm not, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not saying Jonathan did anything good or whatever, mm -hmm. but brutality, wasn't uh, no, at that certainly, level. it wasn't at the level it is today. Today, you are really scared. Of. Well, when the going gets tough, they say, the tough arm themselves with knowledge, I say, since knowledge is power. Chuka is getting tough on NTA. Chuka, not Plus TV Africa, he's old enough to speak for himself. 